In the next two sections, we're going to look at combining different events. So in section 4.2, we say, okay, now that we can calculate the probability of one event happening and the probability of another event happening for the same experiment, what if we want to calculate the probability that either one of them would happen, that one or the other? So there's an example here at the beginning where we look at a deck of cards and we ask, what would the probability of drawing a jack or a queen be? And so you can count up, there are four jacks, there are four queens, which means there are eight cards that are either jacks or queens. So the total probability of drawing one of them is 8 out of 52. Now it turns out if you think about the probabilities individually, the probability of drawing a jack is 4 out of 52, and a queen is the same thing. And if you add them together, you get 8 out of 52. So you might look at that, and you might look at the title of the section, the addition rule, and say, okay, if I ever see the word or, I should add the probabilities. And that's generally true, but there's a uh, extra piece that you need to pay attention to. And this example here says, what if we want to draw, or find the probability of drawing a jack or a diamond? In this case, if you take the probability of drawing a jack and add that to the probability of drawing a diamond, you don't get the correct answer. And if you look at this diagram, you can see why. If you count up all the jacks, there's four of them. If you count up all the diamonds, there's 13 of them. But if you add the four jacks plus the 13 diamonds, you're counting the jack of diamonds twice. So there's some overlap between these two groups. And because of that, there's a piece that gets counted twice, and that throws off the answer. So in this section, we have two different uh, categories of problems. In one, where there are mutually exclusive events, that's the jacks and the queens. The, the term for this we call this mutually exclusive. In that case, the two categories are distinct. There's no overlap between the two. And in that case, you can just add the two probabilities. You can calculate them separately, and you can add them, and you'll get the correct answer. If they're not mutually exclusive, if there is some overlap between the two groups, you have to deal with that double counting, that overlap. And the way we do it is we subtract it off. So if you've counted up the four diamonds, or the four jacks, and if you've counted up the 13 diamonds, you've double counted this one. So if you subtract one from that total, you get the correct answer. And you'll see that as you go through and read this carefully. But the first few examples have mutually exclusive events. So for instance, rolling a six, rolling an odd number, those are disjoint or mutually exclusive. And so for that, you can just add the two probabilities and the same thing for the next couple examples. But then for overlapping events, that's where we need to subtract the overlap so that we get rid of that double counting. And so you can follow through and read this description in more detail, but the general addition rule is here. If you want the probability of one thing or another thing happening, you can add their individual probabilities and then subtract the probability that both of them happened because when you just add the probabilities, you count this overlap twice. So if you subtract the overlap once, you get the correct level. And you can see that with a couple examples here. Again, you can follow through and watch the videos and read them carefully to make sure you can make sense of those. But all of these follow that same principle. And once you get the principle for the addition rule, then all of these fall into place. Now notice for a minute that if the events are mutually exclusive, then this rule still works because now the probability that both of them happen is zero, so you just add their probabilities and subtract nothing, and so you get that earlier addition rule uh, in the same way. So this is why we call this the general addition rule. It works either way, but we specifically need to make sure we use it if there is some overlap between the two categories we look at. And then lastly, we talk about complements, and this is just the probability of something not happening. In short, the probability of something not happening is one minus the probability that it does happen. Basically, this is just another way to answer some questions. If it's easier to answer the question one way or the other, sometimes it, this complement comes in handy. But if you see the word not, the probability of not doing something, you could address it directly. So you could count in the deck of cards, for instance, all the cards that are not aces, and you could count that there are 48 of them. But it's easier to count that there are four aces 
which tells you the probability of drawing an ace is 4 out of 52, and then if you take 1 minus that, you get 48 out of 52. And that's the short answer for a complement. It's written a little bit differently here, but that's the basic principle, that either one of them you can find by taking 1 minus the other. So you could find the probability something doesn't happen by taking 1 minus the probability it does, or you could find the probability it does by taking 1 minus the probability that it doesn't. And you can see that in these examples here. There are some cases to, uh, in which this probability of something not occurring is interesting. So that brings us to the end of section 4.2 with the addition rule and complements. And again, the addition rule, there's this simpler version if the events are mutually exclusive, and there's the more general rule that applies whether or not there's overlap.